Hey guys, let's learn about power and intensity in waves today. Okay, you have already studied that the displacement equation for a wave is given by y equal to a sine kx minus omega t and the corresponding velocity of the particle is given by a omega cos kx minus omega t. Okay, this you guys know. So now the question that I want you to ask yourself is that if there is a wave nicely going on a string, a simple one dimensional wave on a string, okay, and you are basically oscillating the, this is the source, and you're oscillating this in a simple harmonic manner, then you get a sinusoidal wave like this on a string. And you guys remember this is a transverse wave and this is a one dimensional wave. Okay, so let me just consider, you know, this part of it let me consider this part and how much length of the thread you are oscillating is within this yep it's delta x nice so what we'll do is let us look at you know some particles in this there is one particle here one particle you know resting at the mean position one here one here yeah so there are like infinite particles on this thread between this delta x, you guys know this, this, you know, uh, let's just consider the fate of one particle, okay? And why do I want to do that? Because I want to find out how much energy, you know, this delta x region of the string contains because of the waves within it, okay? And I have only drawn waves till here because till the, you know, time that this has oscillated, the waves have only come till here, okay? So yeah, so if I look at any point, then that point will be having two kinds of energies. You guys know that it is kinetic energy plus potential energy. And yeah, you remember that this total energy will not change with time. Okay, if you look at this particle, this guy at the top, it has completely potential energy. Okay, no kinetic energy because it is momentarily at rest over here. Look at this guy. It's at its mean position, you know, this guy, this is our friend over here, at the mean position, okay. So, this guy has only kinetic energy and no potential energy because the thread is not stretched over here. So, let us take this point's energy that will be equal to the maximum kinetic energy and I can say that at any instant of time, all the points on this, you know, thread within this shaded region will be having the same energy, okay, exactly equal to the kinetic energy max of this guy. So can I say that the total energy of this delta x region, okay, E of delta x is nothing but this kinetic energy max added up for all these particles, okay. So if I take every particle, we know all of their, from this we know that you know this, this A w thing, this w is omega okay in scientific circles you're supposed to call that omega so a omega is the this is the maximum possible velocity this is the amplitude that is the maximum displacement okay so this is the maximum displacement and this is the maximum velocity so v max for every particle is nothing but a omega you guys got that okay so every particle has the same maximum velocity so half if i start summing up you know we know that the the formula for kinetic energy is half mv square so if i ta take this for one particle and start summing up for every particle within this delta x i know that v is v max in this case is constant for all of them so i can just you know take this half m common and sum up the uh, sorry i can just take this half v square common and sum up for all the masses okay so I'll get the equation to be half mass of this guy delta x into the v max square. So I've got this. What I'm simply doing is I'm adding the kinetic energy of all the particles. Each particle will be having the same v max. So this v max will come out to be common and this m will be added for all these guys. Okay. So now you guys know that for a string, we have this, you know, property called mu defined, which is the mass per unit length. So this guy has a length delta x. So the mass per delta x is equal to mu. So the mass of delta x is nothing but mu delta x. Okay, and we already know that v max equal to a omega. So half 
into mu delta x into a square omega square yeah got it cool so that tells us that the energy contained within this delta x region of the string because of the wave is half mu delta x a square omega square okay so now you know what we'll do is i hope you guys got this we have the frozen time over here that's why this is like the snapshot of the wave so i allow this source now to make waves for one second okay and let us say that in one second i get this much of a wave okay this new region this 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 region this new region is produced in one second so now can you guys guess in one second what length of new waves will be produced on the string okay so you know that the string velocity is given by v okay v is the velocity of not the string sorry the wave velocity the velocity of the wave that means that if i take this crest this crest moves v meters in one second in other words the new length of wave produced in every second is v meters okay so instead of this delta x if i want to find out in you know this 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 new region this where the waves have been produced in this just one second how much energy is being given by the source in the one second then what will we get what do you guys think okay you know that what is energy per unit time yep that is power okay and what kind of power average power so in one second the amount of energy being given by the source or the amount of energy getting added to the wave is nothing but the energy contained in this v length of v meters length of string where v is the yep speed of the wave okay so instead of this delta x if i want to find p average which is nothing but energy produced by the source in one second that is exactly equal to the energy contained in this v length of string so that gives us the very famous formula half mu a square omega square which is the average power produced by the source okay that doesn't mean that you know in the next smallest instant of time it will produce exactly this power this tells us the average power in say a long cycle okay so that basically tells me in every second on an average this much power is being produced hmm interesting okay so now that you got this let us think of what all complications can be possible in the case of not a wave on a string but rather sound being produced okay so i'm drawing these rectangles over here and i know in this chapter you guys know what these rectangles are mostly standing for these are wave fronts these are wave fronts traveling these are what kind of wave fronts these are planar wave fronts okay and these are wave fronts of sound produced by some source which is really far off from you you who is innocently standing over here okay why innocent because you think that there is some sound there is some power produced in these you know sound waves and you are going to get all these power yet all you have with you is one you know small sheet of something i don't know say aluminum okay so now think of the wave on a string the wave on a string carries the power each particle to the other so this particle is giving its power to the next particle and so on and so forth okay so each you know each tiniest bit so the tiniest bit of power produced by the source is going to go directly to the next particle and the next particle and the next particle so every particle on this one dimensional wave will get the total energy okay energy per unit time the total power but think of a case like this on a case like this the sound energy is produced that is produced is spread completely on the whole area of the wave front imagine me holding the sheet or you holding the sheet does it not depend on when this wave front comes and hits this will it give all the power to it nope yes you guys got it it will depend on the area of this guy okay so this guy's area is very important to determine how much of this power is going to come over here okay so we should define something called intensity 
so the power given to me per unit area is intensity or in other words if i am holding a like i like you can see a 1 meter square sheet then the power that i will get if this was equal to 1 meter square the power that i will get is equal to the intensity so intensity is power by area okay so in other words if i consider you know a nice cylindrical container having a piston there is air inside this you know there are all layers of air inside this and this piston that i have at the end is being oscillated in a simple harmonic fashion this is a really long cylinder so ignoring the end effects we'll get something like these planar waves over there okay so here i want to find out an expression for the intensity and i hope you guys get this this is the side view of the cylinder if i look at it from the front from over here then i'll see that it has an area over here that has area a okay so now let me consider a region of air like we considered a length of the string over here we'll have to consider a length of a string over here here there's a length we'll have to consider a volume over here okay so this has a volume say delta v okay so now let's just imagine what is this this actually is a you know cuboidal region okay which has a surface area of a cross sectional area of this a and a length of say delta x okay so going back to the same way we attacked the problem on wave on of wave on a string the p average we should guess or let's just start from energy the energy should be half into mass of this element into its v max okay so in a displacement wave in sound you guys remember that we use s equal to s not sin kx minus omega t as a displacement and v equal to s not omega cos so on and so forth so basically what i want to tell you is here the v max is called s not omega the only reason being that here the particles are displaced in the longitudinal fashion and not transverse like the wave on a string so we don't use y it's just a convention thingy okay so instead of a we are putting s not over here that's all so yeah so look at this guy now now this guy has a mass of the density of the average density of the region into its volume yeah so its mass is nothing but delta v which is equal to a delta x into density guys got it so the energy it will contain will be equal to half into yep rho a delta x into s not square omega square how did we get this because the energy was equal to what energy was equal to half m v max square and this is nothing but v max is to over here v max like you saw guys got this so again in one second what's going to happen in one second if v is the again velocity of the sound then instead of this delta x we have to put v because v is the region suppose at some time sound had reached only this spot in one second this is the region in which the waves would have been produced and what will this length be nothing but v because distance is equal to speed into time as simple as that okay so when i put that in i get the power equal to half rho a v s not square omega square and how did we define intensity as yep power that this guy with 1 meter square area would get so this total power divided by the area so i divide this whole thing by area i get intensity to be half rho v s not square omega square and that folks is all there is to it to intensity of sound waves but what kind of sound waves planar sound waves and also what kind of intensity 
average intensity okay so average intensity for sound is this now you're going to ask me when this doesn't tell me okay if i have the same sheet that is here and i start running away from the sound source won't it change anything intensity doesn't fall but i know when i am you know listening to some music on my speaker and i go off the intensity seems to drop that is for the next video where we'll tell you why this s not the displacement amplitude itself doesn't remain a constant rather it falls as 1 by r for a spherical wave